Imagine if you're running around with Hashimoto's. You can feel depression, you can feel anxiety, you have IBS issues, uh, you're chronically fatigued. Uh, life is just like at the bottom. It's literally the worst. Hey guys, Alia here. So today I wanted to talk a bit about Hashimoto's and how the carnivore diet dramatically improved the symptoms I had of Hashimoto's. But first I wanna talk about a little bit what it is, what symptoms you have, and what triggers there are to Hashimoto's. Yeah, maybe if you have been experiencing these symptoms in the past, uh, this could be why that is. Okay, so this Hashimoto's disease is an autoimmune condition where your immune system actually attacks your, your thyroid. Um, your immune system is confused. It has antibodies, and these antibodies are the little like soldiers of your immune system, and your immune system is confused and starts attacking your thyroid. This can lead to inflammation and an underactive thyroid. One hallmark of the thyroid of Hashimoto's is weight gain, um, like unexplained weight gain and an inability to lose weight. And I know that sucks. That sucks for all of us women who want to lose weight and have tried so hard and tried so many things to lose weight. But I'll get back to that later. Okay. So here are some of the symptoms of Hashimoto's thyroiditis, Hashimoto's disease, this autoimmune condition, uh, fatigue and sluggishness, increased sensitivity to cold, constipation, pale, dry skin. Uh, I was born that way. Okay. Puffy face, hoarse voice, unexplained weight gain. More on that later. Uh, muscle aches, tenderness, stiffness, joint pains, excessive, this for women, or prolonged menstrual bleeding, depression, bipolar, anxiety. All of these things can be misdiagnosed. Uh, for mental illness when we really have Hashimoto's. It's a symptom of Hashimoto's. Uh, memory lapses or difficulty in concentrating, hair loss or thinning. I am so good at combing my hair off of my head, actually. Um, an enlarged thyroid gland goiter. Constipation. So here, but I want to specifically go into also, so those are some of the symptoms. I'm going to go into the gut symptoms more because I suffered for years with terrible gut issues. Uh, constipation, not so much. Bloating and gas. Irritable bowel syndrome. Symptoms like abdominal pain, cramping. Uh, yeah. Acid reflux. Leaky gut syndrome. These are all symptoms of Hashimoto's. Uh, and so leaky gut symptoms is increased intestinal. There's like little holes in your intestines. And so food's getting through that shouldn't be getting through. Or particles are getting through that shouldn't be getting through. And this actually, I don't know what came first, the chicken or the egg. I don't know if you first had leaky gut and then you had Hashimoto's because your immune system got confused or you had Hashimoto's and then you acquired leaky gut. I'm just saying it's one of the symptoms that's listed here. Um, and SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth higher risk due to slow. So this is a symptom because you have higher risk due to slow digestion and gut mobility, which is part of the Hashimoto's. So some of the triggers, I'm going to go over like some general triggers and then I want to go over food triggers. Okay. Genetic factors. Like if there's a family history of thyroid disorder or autoimmune disease, you're apparently at higher risk. Environmental triggers like toxins, infection, radiation, these things can trigger Hashimoto's. Um, hormonal changes. This is super important. I hear women get this after specific hormonal changes in your life, such as pregnancy, huge hormonal change, pregnancy, menopause, puberty, all of these could potentially affect um, this autoimmune condition. Um, as a side note, I was diagnosed with a thyroid condition after my son was born. It's been very much clearly uh, shown recently that it had always been Hashimoto's because some people that get diagnosed with low thyroid actually have the autoimmune condition. Uh, so there's a lot of misdiagnosis apparently happening when you are diagnosed with low thyroid. Okay, continue on. High levels of stress can trigger Hashimoto's. If you have one autoimmune condition, you're actually likely to get another autoimmune condition. So it's actually really important to find out if you have one of these conditions, by the way, and get it under control. So you don't create more stress in the body, which create more autoimmune issues. Okay. It's very important to me that we talk about food because, because we eat terribly. And I think this is a huge contributing factor to why people feel terrible all the time when you're tired. Um, why we need a lot of help right now. What we eat can seriously activate or upset these conditions that we have, right? 
or it can be like triggers for the antibodies. So let's talk about that for a second. So now you've, let's say you have Hashimoto's, here's some foods that are going to trigger and make the situation worse. It's going to inflame those symptoms that I talked about above. Gluten. So this can be found in wheat, rye, barley. Uh, it can cause inflammation, which can cause autoimmune responses uh, in people with Hashimoto's. Dairy. Oh my God, I love dairy. How many people love dairy? Okay. Many people with Hashimoto's are sensitive to dairy, uh, which can lead to digestive issues and inflammation. I'm so sorry. I hate that. I wish it wasn't true. We all love our cheese. Okay. Soy products can interfere with thyroid function and hormone levels. God, soy is terrible. And we've been drinking it since we were 10 years old. That soy milk is so much better than the milk. All right. Grains. So people can react to grains like corn and rice. It gives us an example, but also wheat and all those other grains. So nightshades. So that's a specific type of vegetables like tomatoes, potatoes, eggplants, peppers. These can cause triggers or inflammation. Nuts and seeds can be problematic for individuals, especially if you have other food sensitivities. Um, and this is my favorite, caffeine. Caffeine and alcohol can exacerbate symptoms if you have Hashimoto's and um, alcohol. Alcohol can exacerbate your situation. Okay, processed foods. Of course, processed foods, high in sugar, refined grains, unhealthy fats, all these can in increase triggers or inflammation and fried and fast foods. Obviously, obviously, I literally didn't need to go over ultra processed foods or fast foods and fried foods, but you gotta talk about it. So for me, I started the carnivore diet in March, 2023. Um, have I been perfect? No, but I, within five days of starting the carnivore diet, my Hashimoto symptoms dramatically reduced. I would just rewatched a video. And in that video, I said, I felt 90% better. Imagine if you're running around with Hashimoto's, you can feel depression, you can feel anxiety, you have IBS issues, uh, you're chronically fatigued. Uh, life is just like at the bottom. It's literally the worst. And so you are stuck in this situation where it's literally the worst. And for me, I was addicted to food. I love food. If I wasn't following this way of eating, I would have probably gained more weight and been more upset about my weight. Anyways, this way of eating not only handled issues with how I eat, but it handled these issues that I'd been dealing with for years that I didn't realize were actually directly related to my thyroid condition. And when my thyroid condition is actually an autoimmune condition. So it's beautiful to know that a person by just changing some habits and changing how they eat and changing bad habits that they have in their life, they can actually dramatically improve your quality of life and how you feel. I can't explain enough how terrible I felt. Um, I was constantly worried about my weight, but I was constantly, and, but I was addicted to food at the same time. It is not a fun way to be. And the funny thing is I was constantly exacerbating the situation in my body by eating the wrong foods. So once I got the wrong foods out and the right foods started going in, it was like day and night. I felt like a different person, by the way, puffy face. Absolutely. If you think I have a puffy face now, man, you should have saw me, uh, like a year and a half ago. I will put a picture up. Actually, I will find a picture and put it up because my face was like, so that's a very funny scenario. It's a very funny thing that that happens to be like a symptom of Hashimoto's. But anyways, I can't stress enough that eating the right foods will totally change your life. For me, I had to do a carnivore way of eating. I had to basically get everything out. I will say I have drank coffee almost the entire time, like um, many cups of coffee a day, a ridiculous amount of caffeine that I should not have been drinking. But that's fine. I had to come to that conclusion on my own. And sometimes you need to do that. You need to be ready for that change. Um, and dairy. So those are coffee. Funny enough is an easier battle for me than the dairy. So the dairy is going to be the next thing that goes. But let me say, why am I still doing this? I felt 90% better within three days. Why am I still doing this? Because I still have a very large amount of these antibodies. So these little soldiers are still attacking my thyroid per my most recent blood work, like a ridiculous amount of them. And so I want to cut out the dairy, cross my fingers, and I'm getting rid of the caffeine in hopes that that improves the thyroid numbers. Because I know, let's talk about the weight gain, weight loss. On carnivore, I have lost weight. It bounces between 25 and 30 pounds. And I've stayed, if I don't go completely off the rails. It stays within that range. I would like to lose another 30 to 50 pounds. 
I have this thyroid condition. If I don't actually fix what's killing my thyroid, I'm not going to lose the weight. I might feel better. Thank God. Thank God I feel better. Oh my God. Life was so not fun for, I can't say hundred percent of the time it was awful, but people with Hashimoto's understand this. So it's just a lot better now. And my quality of life, 90% improved in five days. I want everyone to feel 90% better in five days. Carnivore diet is the easiest way to do it. I'm not really going to explain how to do the carnivore diet in this video. I have plenty of videos on that. And my favorite video to explain it is actually not one of my videos. It's Ken Berry's video on how to do the carnivore diet. So I will put that video down below and I highly recommend you watch it. But imagine you feel like poop all the time. And then in three days, you can feel better. Three to five days, two weeks. You feel like an amazingly different person. You actually feel, remember like when you were a kid and you were like happy and like you could take on the world. And then now with Hashimoto's and maybe you don't even realize it's Hashimoto's, but where did that go? I want that back. Imagine getting that back. Imagine getting your ability to like take on the world and be a happy little kid again. But now you're like an adult. So you understand a little bit more about life, but you can still have that. And I want that for everybody. And I want you to feel good. And I don't want you to have IBS and I don't want you to just deal with all the things that I dealt with. And maybe you're already dealing with them. By the way, the fatigue will go away in days. The exhaustion will go away. I'm not going to say like 100% of the time. I feel like a thousand percent better, but this helps me so much to keep these symptoms under control. It's crazy. I'm going to just go over the symptoms again really quick. What I felt, sluggishness, fatigue. I would be exhausted. I would just go watch TV. I wouldn't want to take my kids to the park. Days, people. Three days. Three days so much energy. I'm taking my kids to the park. I'm doing stuff. We're going to the pool. You have to be there if I'm, as a mom for your kids. And when you feel this way, the adverse effects of this autoimmune condition, you don't want to do those things because you just don't have the energy or the willingness because you've used all the energy you already have doing the things you must do. Of course, you must take care of your kids. But like me, I must make money so I can pay the rent. And, and then afterwards, I'd rather watch Netflix or, but with my kids, but that's not the best way to be a mom. And maybe I'm rambling here a little bit, but I just want to give you the, the night and day difference that occurs when you get the bad things out, get the gluten out, get the soy out. So really, I feel like carnivore diet is the ultimate elimination diet for people with Hashimoto's. You're going to feel so much better. However, I'm sure there's doctors out there if they watch my video who are going to disagree with me. Maybe there's doctors that will agree with me. I'm not sure. I'm sure there are some doctors that will agree with me. Um, in fact, I know who they are. But my point is, is that you can do carnivore. I recommend if you have Hashimoto's, do it for 90 days. Do it for 90 days and then reintroduce after that. The reason is I talked to a, um, a thyroid specialist a couple of weeks ago on my channel. And she specifically mentioned it takes 90 days to like kill the antibodies that were triggered by something. Okay. That's my understanding of it. And I will link her video at the end so you guys can watch it because it's super educational. But the point is, is that if you give it 90 days and you take out all the food that is triggering it, if you can get some better sleep, if you can get some stresses out of your life, you are going to feel a lot better. Then at the end of the 90 days, maybe you want to reintroduce some foods, like reintroduce them one at a time, see how you feel. But once you have like a clean palate, so to speak, uh, a cleaned out body, so to speak. Oh, by the way, Dr. Barry says also in 90 days, you're going to reset your immune system. So you have this datum of the antibodies dying in 90 days. And you have the datum of your immune system going to be reset in 90 days. So if you do this really well, you're going to feel amazing very fast, by the way. That's not a joke. But maybe in 90 days, you can also like markedly, re markedly reduce your antibodies that are attacking your thyroid then reintroduce certain foods. Obviously, you're not going to reintroduce junk food. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like, maybe if you're like, oh, but I love avocados. Okay, eat av avocados for a couple of days. And I'm not one of those strict, strict, strict carnivores. I eat basically carnivore. That's basically what I follow. Another thing I'm trying to get rid of is stevia. So people will say, like, if you're not carnivore, you'd be like, oh yeah, she's totally carnivore. If you're like a super strict carnivore police person, they would be like, oh, she's not carnivore. No, I am I follow how I can eat and how I want to eat. And even eating that way in three days, still drinking a ton of coffee, I felt remarkably better. So anyways, back to this 90 day thing. Do carnivore for 90 days. If you want, stick to it. If you don't want, reintroduce one food at a time, see how you feel. And then just keep doing that until you find the diet that's appropriate for you and that works the best for you. 
because that's what we want. We want the diet that's going to work the best for you to keep your autoimmune symptoms at bay so you can live the best quality life that you possibly can while having an autoimmune condition. The point is, if you can get those triggers out of your life, if you can get those triggers out of your life, then you're going to feel a lot better. And then you can have the quality of life that you want. You have the energy you want to do your work, to be with your kids, uh, to be the best wife you can, to clean your house if you like to clean your house and not hire somebody to clean your house. Um, all these sort of things. Do you get what I'm saying? You want the best quality of life possible. And if you can get your autoimmune condition under control through proper eating habits, it's it's a life changer. I am going to be implementing, as soon as they get here, three specific supplements for my Hashimoto's. Again, somebody's been like, that's not carnivore. I'm like, okay, well, maybe you don't have Hashimoto's. So as soon as I get it, I'm going to be taking selenium myo-inositol, which is a B vitamin. I'm not going to explain it here. You can uh, Google it. Myo-inositol and then NAC, NAC. It's like a very, like the strongest antioxidant or it's the precursor to the strongest antioxidant. So I'm going to be taking those uh, three things as soon as they arrive to my house and I will do an update video after 30 days of that to see if it at all affected my weight loss. And if it did, hallelujah. And I will do a video about that because I think lots of people with Hashimoto's will want that information. Cross my fingers, cross my heart, hope to die, stick a needle in my eye. Um, if you found any of this information helpful, or if you ever experienced any symptoms of Hashimoto's, let me know in the comments. By the way, I highly recommend that if you have a thyroid condition, you go get tested for antibodies, either for Graves' disease, which is the, the hyperthyroid, or for Hashimoto's, which is the low thyroid. Because if you have uh, a thyroid condition and you're just being given medication for it, but you don't have like the right why, like the right reason why your thyroid is being that way, you're not going to handle the root cause situation. So I highly, highly, highly recommend you go find out if you have one of these autoimmune conditions, because then you can take the correct actions to deal with it. Um, all right. Thanks, guys. Uh, if you like this, give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment down below and subscribe. Yay. Subscribe for more. Thanks.